unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Christians and friends, Hope Covenant Kingdom Ministries Bible Study is now in session. We come to you each and every Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m. through 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. We are streaming live via Facebook. Our lesson for today is lesson number 31 and our subject, it doesn't take a village to raise a child. It doesn't take a village to raise a child. I am your host, Pastor Michael Body. We are a production of Hope Covenant Kingdom Ministries, Chicago, Illinois, Bronzeville. If you are enjoying this hour, won't you let us know by phoning us at area code 773-924-2790. We also invite you to join immediately following this hour. Apostle Timothy Treadwell, pastor of Performing Christ Ministries, each and every Tuesday, again, streaming live via Facebook at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. The location in Chicago is 5209 West Lake Street. We invite you to please share this invitation for this hour of worship with your Facebook family and friends. your attention to the 67 number of the Psalms. God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that thy way may be known upon earth thy saving health among all nations. Let the people praise thee. O God let all the people praise thee. O let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For thou shalt judge the people righteously, and govern the nations upon earth. Let the people praise thee, O God, let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him, the word of God.
cartoon, The Hope Covenant Kingdom Ministries Bible Study on another Tuesday evening at 7 o'clock in the p.m. with Pastor Michael Body. Thanks be unto God that giveth us the victory through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For great is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Amen. We have nothing new to tell you tonight. The same thing we always tell you each and every Tuesday night. It makes no difference what you think of me. But it makes a lot of difference what I think of you. And if I was hungry, I wouldn't tell you. For the God I serve, he is able to do anything but fail. Might I encourage you all by saying to you, look to the hills from which come your help, knowing that all of your help Come it from the Lord. Amen. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We praise God from whom all blessings flow. God is a good God and he is good all the time. And all the time God is good. Somebody ought to shout glory. Amen. We thank you for allowing us to come into your homes, your place of business, your place of confinement the hospital room, wherever you are kind enough to tune us in at this hour. As I say oft times, it's just nice to be nice. Amen. We want to thank you all, uh, Sister Priscilla Moore and uh, Minister Louise Davis and Cousin Lenora and all of you all who uh, tune in each and every Tuesday. Amen. I pray that something that we say during this hour of ministry uh, via social media that will help somebody. God bless you and, and, and Candy Blue, my sister. Amen. God bless you for encouraging me. God bless you. Amen. And I want you all, before we get into our lessons, uh, Sister Claritha Griffin, we go way back from when I was in the teenage years, that's not too far, <laughs> that's not too far, but the, the teenage years, we in Claritha Griffin, then she was Claritha Bender, we sung with the Paraclete Choral Ensemble, and man, it's just a pleasure that you all would share. I need you all to do two things for me to, to today. I need you all to share this hour, amen, amen. We, we, we don't want to be stingy. Uh, uh, with the word of God. We want to share it and we got something good for you. We have something good for you tonight. Uh, I just pray somebody be helped. I help. I pray that God would show up and show out like he always does. And, 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 and I need you all to share. Those of you who know how to share this hour, share it on your page, share it with your friend. Also, I need you to go to uh, YouTube. You all that have YouTube account. If you don't have a YouTube account, get one. All you got to do is get a Gmail account. Amen. A Gmail email. And you can sign in to YouTube and go to Pastor Michael. And you all know how to spell it. M-I-K-A-L. Body. B-O-D-D-I-E. And go on there and subscribe. I am. Uh, it is my goal to have 500 subscriptions. And if you all would do that. Uh, I would really appreciate it. Now, we need to go into our lesson. You got your Bibles? Amen. This is lesson number 31. And I thank you all that tried to make all 31. Praise God. And it's always said that, that it takes a village to raise a child. Well, tonight my subject is it doesn't take a village to raise a child. Amen. Most of the time, the things that I teach are not popular. You won't hear it everywhere. It's not in pulpits across Chicago, across the nation. I'm not saying that other pastors and ministers and religious leaders don't preach truth, but I'm just one that I can't teach it, I can't preach it. If God didn't say it, then I'm not going to say it. And this was not true because the Bible said, Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you, not set you, shall make you free. So my subject today, it doesn't take a village to raise a child. 
So I'm not going to keep you wondering. I'm going to let you know, since it doesn't take a village, what does it take? It takes God and good God-fearing parents. God and good God-fearing parents. Forget about the village. The scripture tells us clearly whose responsibility it is. Amen. If you think it takes the village to raise your child, get over it because it don't. It says, and these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. You don't want everybody teaching your children. You don't want the village teaching your children. And shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. That's our job. Don't send them to school and expect for the teacher to do what you're supposed to do at home. It says, and I want y'all to take that scripture down. Uh, in Deuteronomy 6, 6-9. Deuteronomy 6, 6-9. It says, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. When you're sitting at home, you need to talk to your children. It won't be so much shooting in Chicago. Somebody ain't sitting in the house. Somebody not talking and praying with the children. And when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down at night time, we need to be talking to our children. And when thou risest up, when you get up in the morning, you need to say something that, that, that will let your children know that it's either holiness or hell. And thou shalt bind them, watch this, we don't believe in this nowadays, uh, Minister David. Thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the post of thine house and on the gates. What is that talking about? That's talking about to be God-fearing. Your children are supposed to be taught respect. They're supposed to be taught manners. But most of all, they need to be taught to be God-fearing. God bless you, Lisa Valentine. Does it take a village to raise a child? Well, let me tell you something. If you've been expecting the village to raise your child, you need to go buy you a burial plot because the village is killing our children. Amen. What a child needs is unconditional love. An unconditional love. And there are several categories of love. And I come to tell you the village at, that I live in and probably the village that you live in, they're not getting unconditional love. And, and, and you better love them. You better embrace them. You better kiss them. You better tell them you love them. Because if you don't, somebody in the streets will. A child needs unconditional love. Love that usually comes from a family. We need to lose that black folk. We need to lose that game banger mentality. These is folks. These is fam. No. If we was fam and folk, we wouldn't be killing each other. Fam don't kill fam. Why? Let's talk about fam. Folks that talk about fam and folk don't know what folk and fam is. Let me tell y'all, and y'all tell somebody Pastor Body said, you know what makes folk and fam? It takes God first. Then it takes the father. We didn't wipe that out and replace father with baby daddy. And then it takes mother. We didn't wipe her out. And replace mother with baby mama. And then it takes the children. We have wiped them out and made hood rats. Amen. I'm talking about when you don't do it God's way, when you do it the way of the village.
A village can, don't get me wrong, I'm not fighting the village because I, I remember the village when I came up, Louise, and, and, and I know there were some folk, but y'all, listen what I said, some folk that, that, that was concerned about, about their friends, children, uh, going to school and coming home, and, and so in that instance, a village can be helpful if it supports the family, if it supports the family. And, and don't fool yourself, all villages don't support the family. We make nice excuses. And I don't understand it with black families because, you know, every week I talk about black folks. And don't get upset when I talk about black folks. I only do it because I'm black. <laughs> if I was white, I would talk about white folks. But I can't help white folks cause, as much as I can help black folks because I'm black. And I love you and I want to help you. So a village can help, but it first got to support the family. And even though we make nice excuses for our parental criticism in the name of safety or children's rights, all that mess. But ultimately, such criticism isolates and does not support. Boy, my mother need to hear the laws that they make now don't, don't, of all this child abuse. And don't get me wrong, there is child abuse, child neglect. But you know what? I got all the child abuse and all the child neglect my mama could give me. But I'm here and I'm living through it, praise God. I'm going to give you all some scripture on that. If you want to help a child, and that's what happened. Uh, we claim we want to help a child, but we're trying to help the child by uh, 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 trying to befriend them. If you want to help a child, you have to first of all help a parent. If you're not helping a parent, I'm talking to church folks. You ain't got no business trying to help somebody else's children. You need to help the, the parent first. That's why people lying on so many folks. Everybody nowadays is a pedophile. Everybody, don't nobody, everybody don't want your children. That's because we're doing it the wrong way. So if you want to help the child, help the child's parent. We don't have to apologize for being the authority in our home. Amen. And then the child come home and the child tell you, you know what? My, my teacher said, if you whoop me, then I'm supposed to call the police. But boy, I know the police would have got me a mini day because I whooped mine. And, all, and every one of my children are alive. One of my sons just left here. But the Bible said, I believe it. And that settles it. It says, spare the rod and spoil the child. It don't say, let the village raise them for you. Somebody shout glory. God has divinely, God has divinely ordained that we should care and rule over our own families. My God. <clears throat> That's the problem we have. We want other folks to raise our children. I remember a word my mama couldn't stand. Uh, my mama couldn't stand the word, can we go outside? That outside word, word had almost killed the black race of children outside. You know what my mama told me about outside? You don't go outside unless you're going somewhere. So because we were raised under the outside mentality, we think at 40 and 50 years, we're supposed to stand in front of the store all day and all night. We think we're supposed to sit on our, our front porch and all we're doing is bringing down the value of our property because we taught our children Go outside. 
My children did not go outside. When my children left the house, they were on their way to an activity. They were on their way to school. They were on their way to uh, a, a dance lessons. They were on their way to the skating rink. They was on their way to the park. But then we let them go outside and then the streets killed them outside. And then we looking like, why are they doing this? Why are you doing this? Charity starts at home, come on y'all, and spreads abroad. So we don't have to apologize for taking authority in our house. For the Christian to fail to care for our own financially, it's our responsibility, that child, when you lay down, nobody didn't tell you to lay down with nobody, so no need to get mad at baby daddy, baby mama, and all that stuff, and keeping up all that drama, because you had a choice in the matter. For the Christian, I can't talk about nobody else but black folks and Christians, because I'm black and I'm a Christian. Amen. To fail to care for our own financially, emotionally, spiritually, and physically, it brings a specific warning. It's a warning that comes with that. But if any provide not for his own, and y'all talk about the black man. I don't agree with everybody's a deadbeat dad. A lot of uh, uh, the black mothers don't allow daddy to take care of the baby because we got so much other drama going on. Society have put the black woman over the black man. But God, I don't understand something must have been wrong with God because he said the man is the head of the house. And then you got some women, excuse me ladies, who would say I play, I was the mama and the father. <laughs> Scientifically, <laughs> uh, I don't think you can do that because to be a father, you get. Now, you may have been a good mother, but it's impossible for a woman, don't tell that lie to nobody, you was no good father. Because my father wasn't there. And let me tell y'all something stop talking about the kid's father to them. I don't care if he is a crackhead. When you got him, he was a crackhead. He was all right then. He wasn't no good when you got him. But now, he's a deadbeat dad now. But he was deadbeat when you got him. That's why the Bible teaches us that we should not be unequally yoked. I'm going somewhere with this. I'm thankful for the influence in my life of a good church. I was raised up in one church all my life. Holy, Holy Trinity Missionary Baptist Church. A good school. Parkman Elementary School. Done by vocational. And good friends. Hmm. Let me tell y'all about the way Georgia body. My mother did it. Since I couldn't go outside. I thank God I didn't go outside. Because something happened to a lot of people that was outside. I'm not living now. I'm still living in good health. Amen. But I couldn't go outside. And when I did, Mama took me somewhere. But guess what Mama did? She made sure my friends was those folks I went to church with. And when I would bring a, a, another child, and I said, Mama, this is my friend. Mama would look at me and say, Boy, you ain't got no friend. I don't say, why she say that? Well, I, I understand it now, Cynthia. Woman of God, I understand. We think everybody is our friend, and then we don't understand why we are always in some type of mess. Why? Because we are looking to the village to do things that we're supposed to do ourselves. No influence is greater in the parents. Uh, greater than the parents who are extremely active. 
in every facet of their children's existence. Every facet of your child's existence, his life, you're supposed to be a part, not the village. Go run and tell that. Let me tell you what happens when the village raises your children. You don't take care of them at home. You don't educate them. You don't teach them manners. You don't teach them respect. Some of the children from the village raise the parents. Then you send the children to school just to get them out the house. Not for education. And the majority of the time that student is in class they are being disciplined. I'm talking about black children. They're being disciplined instead of taught. Why? Because they're not taught at home. Your child needs to know something, needs to have some sense before they go to school so the teacher can do their job. Then guess what? Then we'll go to school, up to the school and want to whoop the, whoop the teacher, and we want to whoop the principal because the village raised our children. <laughs> the parents who demonstrated leadership in an active way were God-fearing good parents. I want to just read a scripture just for a minute. I want you all to look at this. If you got your Bible, this is a good scripture. You need to read to your children. And I don't want you all to tell me nothing about that's the Old Testament. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, don't take nothing away from it and don't add nothing to it. I'm saved because I believe the whole Bible. From Genesis to Revelations. And for y'all that's deep, even those books that we call the hidden or the lost books that's been set aside. Amen. Deuteronomy 21. Go with me, y'all. 13 to 21. All right. It says, if a man have a stubborn and rebellious son. Did y'all get that? If a man have... A stubborn and rebellious son, which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and that when they have chastened him, will not hearken unto them. Verse 19 says what? Then shall his father and mother lay hold on him. This Bible. And bring him out. Unto the elders of the city. And unto the gate. Of his place. Take him to the front yard. That's when you had. A real village though. Verse 20. And they shall say unto the elders. Of the city. This our son. Is stubborn. And rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. Verse 21. Are y'all reading? And all the men of his city shall stone him with stones that he die. So shall thou put evil away from among you. Amen. And all Israel shall hear and fear. Some things we have to get, get straightened out. I hear it in the church so much. The church, we need to, uh, how we say that? To draw the young people. We need to draw the new millenniums. I disagree with that. I believe we need to draw the kingdom. Amen. Everything new don't make it right. 
Amen. God loves everybody. God don't have no respect to person, no, no certain age. And we getting hung up on, we need to draw some, some young folks in here. Let me tell y'all something. The Bible said the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And if a person is 10 years old and they are sinner, God hates sins, love the sinner. If they're 20, if they're 30, if they're 40, if they're 50, don't be fooled. The church wasn't to draw young people. We need to stop that mess. When I came up in the church, it was not designed to draw young folks. And if the church was, then you find it. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me, not the children. Why am I saying this tonight? The village had messed up the new millenniums. We got hip-hop church, and it's okay. We got rapping in the church. Because we're trying to draw the young people. Well, if you draw them, draw them right. Don't draw them wrong. So what we're doing, we're taking the young people that we're supposed to be training how to dress, training them how to respect, training them uh, 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 godly principles, and we're telling them, well, they're young. So we ain't going to tell them nothing. And we're the church. What excuse do we use, Lisa? Well, they the church of the day. I'm not going nowhere. I'm still here. Who, who said to young folks, it's the church of the day? I ain't dead. So what you telling me, the church is for the young folks. And they can come in and just do anything Wear anything. And you know what? I'm going to talk to y'all young ladies. Because I have to follow the spirit. We got little boys growing up. You don't know if the little boy is a boy or a girl. He got more ponytails. Two years old, he need a haircut. Two years old, he need, you need to know the difference from a boy and a girl. That's when the hood, the village, because you raising him to look like a rapper. Two years old with a head full of dreads. What's wrong, black folks? Two years old with earrings in your son's ear, and then when he start acting feminine, you don't understand it. I'm trying to teach tonight. Then we got this new fad. We got this new fad. We got too many of our young people, the girls, always, they have too many sleepovers. Just keep on letting them sleep over. That's why women marry women. They call it what they want to, bisexual. The Bible says abomination. I don't see nothing wrong with it. Are they just friends? But they're human. And you keep letting somebody lay up in the bed together. Every time you look up some little girl laying up in your house in the bed with your daughter, soon they're going to go to experiment. That's village principles. That ain't the principles of God. When we were raised up, we didn't spend the night everywhere. I can understand a birthday sleepover, but y'all doing too much sleeping over, and, and as a result of it, you can't tell a boy from a girl. Proverbs. God bless you, Sister Roy. 22 and 6. I just want to help somebody. So, so when people tell y'all that stuff, we need to draw young people. Need to stop that. No, we don't, the church don't need to draw no young people. If you draw the parents, you're supposed to have the young people. Amen. It, we need to try to draw the, 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 the uh, uh, people from the kingdom, not, from, not the village, but the kingdom who want to be a part 
of the kingdom of God and for them to bring their house. Because how many of you know that when you go to church and you tell your child they don't have to go to church, you might as well stay home too. Because you can't cover your children by telling them you go do you go do what you want to do. Got your little boys walking around the church with with, with, with hats on on the head in church like a woman. We haven't even taught boys that when you're in the building to take off the cap. I'm talking about kingdom principles. Why? Because we let the village raise our children. And that's what they look like. Village children. Jesus said, on this rock I build my church, the gates of hell... God don't want, are not going to let nobody tear his church down. Old crabby folks or the new young millennium folks. All unrighteousness is sin. I know we make excuses for everything for our children because I love my, I don't think nobody's no prettier than my girls too. But they got to give an account. And for these boys that we that that, that that we allow to bring drugs in our house, we know we got drugs in our house, but we allow the village. You know when you smell something burning in your house, it ain't smelling right? Amen. Because the village, you know when your son is bringing his girlfriend in the bedroom and your daughter is bringing a young man in her bedroom, mama wouldn't let me bring nobody in the house. You either gonna stand for something or you'll fall for anything. <clears throat> All right, train up a child. That's Proverbs 26. Train up. Your job to train. Quit making thinking the teacher's supposed to do your job. You laid down, you made the baby, now you take care of the baby. You want everybody to take the neighborhood, you want the, the police, the doctor, the lawyer, the Indian chief to take care of your children. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. In other words, he won't be a fool. Even when he mess up. Because Jesus said, he said, I'm married to the backslider. And if you ain't never been with Jesus, you can't backslide because you never had the relationship. So he said, when he is old, he will not depart from it. Ephesians, watch this, 6 and 4. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. It's not our job to abuse our children, to, uh, uh, to make them angry, or just to be bosses. We need to learn how to love our children. And sometimes it's okay to embrace your son. Amen. Little bitty baby boys are not men. They are babies. And you got some daddy stuff. Don't kiss him. He's going to be gay. That's ignorance. Amen. A baby needs a hug. A baby don't don't understand a, a, a male and female and, and, and femininity and masculinity. And when you start off, I, I see some some men punching on a little bitty baby talking about, man, you're you going to be a man. you got to be tough. You're going to make a baby tough. Provoke not your children to wrath. Don't fuss at your children sometimes. Discipline, I did it a lot. I made some mistakes. But when we learn better, what? But bring them up in the nurture. What's nurture? It means nurturing is doing everything you can for the better of them. Don't send them to church. Don't send them to church. Bring them to church. And in my mama's house, when you got tired of going to church, 
And you said you weren't going to church. Mama said, fine. But then she said something else. She said, move. Amen. And in my house, there was nobody that didn't go to church. But guess what? All of my children are, are alive. And I'm not bragging. I'm thanking God. But it's strange when we change the way that we raise our children and we start allowing the village to raise our children every week. Four, five, six, seven of our children are being shot down. When we started letting the, the village raise our children, parents were burying our children and grandchildren. And it's supposed to be the other way. They ought to be burying us, but, but, but we are burying them. Because God never planned that the village would raise your child, but that you would bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Proverbs 29 and 15. The rod and reproof give wisdom. Did y'all hear that? The rod. Some of y'all don't even know what a rod is. Some of the, the rod, the children putting upside your head. The rod and reproof. A child needs a rod. Not all the time. A child needs reproof because they give wisdom. But watch this and, and jot the scripture down. Because this, and give it to the new millennium parents because they don't understand that Proverbs 29 and 15 said, A child left to himself bringing his mother to shame. A child left to himself bringing his mother to shame. What happened is when you allow the child to, 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 to just be to himself do what he want to do, then he'll raise his own self. Proverbs 23 and 13 says, Withhold not correction from the child. Correction is a part of godly behavior and principles. Correction is a part of godly behavior and principles. Bible says, withhold not correction from the child. For if thou beateth him with the rod, check this out, he shall not die. What? I thought they said call the police. Sent it. Proverbs 23 and 13 say, if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. You're not supposed to kill a child, but you're supposed to put something on his mind. Amen. That's what you call, uh, George Mathis called tough love. When you don't get tough love, you have a nice funeral. Some of y'all going to get this next week. No tough love, but you're going to have a nice funeral. A nice t-shirt with, with, with R.I.P. on the t-shirt. And we, that's another thing black folks need to stop doing. Tell us, we say rest in peace, and our children, we got them going around game land, game land wearing people's picture that you never wore before, making a mockery out of the dead, saying rest in peace. How can I rest in peace? You never even had a picture of me, but now you wear a picture of me while I'm dead. But then you say rest. That, 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 that's village principles, ghetto. And why we do it? Because black folks like me, we like monkey see, monkey do. When our children leave this world, well, he didn't wear suits. Maybe he should have wore a suit. She didn't wear dresses. Maybe it would have helped if she did. Deuteronomy 6 and 7. 
Y'all tired of me yet? Deuteronomy 6 and 7, Thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Now, we're going to skip that one because we did that one already. Proverbs 13 and 24, He that spared his rod hated his son. You don't discipline your son, you can't love. Love, God. Jesus chastised those whom what? Somebody put it down there for me. Jesus chastised those whom he loved. So he that spared his rod hated his son, and he that loved him chastened him be times. That being over and over again. When you love your children, you're going to chastise them. Colossians 3 and 21. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. We don't want to discourage our children, but that don't mean we don't that that that, that we just let them just run wild in the streets. Proverbs 29 and 17. Correct thy son. Correct thy son. And he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall delight unto thy soul. That means your, when you correct your child and let him know right from wrong, amen, then he will be a blessing unto you. When, when, when you go down to the moor, you, you don't have to tell people how many, how many old ladies he helped walk across the street and, 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 and uh, how many persons, groceries he carried and all this. Proverbs 22 and 15. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. Child's children are foolish. They need adults. They need parents. Amen. But the rod of correction shall drive it far from them. The rod of correction shall drive foolishness out of a child. God bless you, Leola. Proverbs 19 and 18. Chasten thy son while there is hope. <clears throat> we keep trying to let the village do it. He hanging out with fam. He hanging out with folk. He hanging out with, with, with dog. And we so silly. Why you let somebody call you dog? Call me Michael. Don't call me not. And then our daughter stand telling another girl, that's my bitch. Bitch, so -and -so. Yeah, I said it. Because we need to stop it. You calling, your daughter is letting her friend, her BFF or whatever, call her a bitch. That's village chief. That's that's village principle. We need to do better. And it takes people that would stand strong on the word to teach kingdom principles. If you know my name, call me my name. That's respect. My name is not dude. My name is not folk. My name is not fam. My name is not dog. My name is not nigga. So a white person call us nigger, we go ballistic. We going around calling each other niggers. Do you know what a nigger is? A nigger is a low person. But we call us my nigger. That's my nigger. That's my nigger. I'm not your nigger. Matter of fact, I'm not a nigger. God has no respect to person. Jew, Gentile, Psalms 127. We only got a little bit of time going. I got, I got, I got, I got, I got to wrap it up. Got to, uh, Psalms 127, 8 through 5. All I don't read you all, look, look it up and read it. It says, low children are a heritage of the Lord. Children are a heritage of the Lord. God blesses us with children. If you raise your child right, 
and I have to keep putting this out there, with godly principles, Randy, so happy to have you tonight, uh, 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 then you won't be ashamed of them. So let's say, low children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. What am I saying here? A woman who bears a child, that child is blessed because God blesses the womb before the child even comes in the... It takes the womb to be blessed. And if you're able to mother a child or the father a child, you ought to think enough of that child to give him back to God and not to the village. I know a lot of folks don't agree with me, but it ain't about me, it's about God and what's best for your children. If you want your children to live kingdom lives, then you got to let them be raised with kingdom principles. Amen. Second Timothy 3 and 16. All scripture is given by inspiration. All scripture. Don't tell me that Joe Blow wrote that. Now, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. If you go to church every Sunday and just get entertained, you're missing something. You mean to tell me I go to church every Sunday and, and, and I dance, I shout, I speak in tongue, I fall on the floor. The B3 Hammond organ sound good. The choir sound good. They give a good performance. We're missing something. All scripture is given by inspiration. The word of God should inspire you of God. And it's profitable. It's good for doctrine. Bible doctrine is good. It might not be good to you. It's just like Father John, those that used to take Father John, know that Father John was not good to you, just like castor oil, but it's good for you. Profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Psalm 127 and 3. Uh, we did that. 2 Timothy 3.14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. Our children can't continue with what they haven't learned. Then we have let them think that they run it. You quit. That's why uh, our children think if, uh, if, if we get 30, 40 years old, we just stupid. This is their world. We slow. We lame. But the Bible said, the older men for wisdom, the younger men for war. They got a lot of energy, but they ain't got no sense. It, that is when we don't raise them up in the word of God. 2 Timothy 3 and 14, but continue thou in the things which, uh-oh, what am I doing here? Okay. Okay, excuse me a second. What I got going on here? Okay, I'm back. I'm sorry about that. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of. You ought to learn something from your parents. You ought to learn something from a relative. From somebody at the church. Somebody in your life. Amen. And has been assured of, knowing of whom thou shalt has learned. Proverbs, watch this. 15 and 5 says, A fool... And the Bible says, somebody said, don't call nobody a fool. I didn't call nobody a fool. The Bible says, a fool despises his father's instruction. 
when you, your daddy and your mama can't tell you nothing, you're a fool. And I didn't say it. But he that regarded reproof is prudent. Prudent meaning wise. Matthew 19 and 14, but Jesus said what? Suffer little children and forbid them not to come unto me for such is the kingdom of heaven. When we talk about the new millenniums, our concern need to be not going along with everything that they think is right, but to suffer them and forbid them not to come unto Jesus, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Proverbs 22 and 6, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22 and 15, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. All right. We cannot allow the village of our culture to be more active in our lives, the lives of our children, than we are. As we close out, Proverbs 22 and 6, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. It's perhaps the most commonly used verse on child rearing. That proverb applies a general truth to a specific situation. It is a principle more than a promise. We have all known those who have gone bad, who grew up in good homes, and they had godly parents. The rebellious will choose to ignore the good training and teaching. When teenagers do this, it is less a reflection on the parent than on the teenager who apparently has not submitted to the will of the Lord. We got to understand our children got to stand before God. You cannot stand before God for your child. So when you when you expect for the village to raise your child, the Bible said that uh, 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 one day we're going to have to stand and be judged for the deeds in this body. And the Bible, the Bible reads the book will be open, and inside that book is another book, and inside of that book is the book of life. And if your name is not found in the Lamb book of life, in hell you lift up your eyes. As parents follow the direction of God's authority in their lives, they are better equipped to serve as an authority in the lives of their children. We can't, we can't leave where we don't go. We can't teach what we don't know. We can't smoke weed with them. We can't sleep, smoke loud and drink alcohol. And then we try to tell them, right. Good parenting begins with our right relationship with God. When our relationship, brothers and sisters, amen, Leola, if our relationships are right with God, we simply cannot be and are not the wrong type of parents. We are good parents. Many of us talk highly of the power of prayer. But how many of us actually pray daily for our children? How many of us hug and embrace our children and tell them that we love them? Many of us desire that our children have happy marriages with a pleasant family atmosphere, yet I was just messed up with bitterness and a loveless cohabitation. Let us be models of godliness, parents. Let us be models of godliness in all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works In doctrine showing uncorruptness. That's the way we raised them. Not the village. 
showing gravity, showing sincerity, showing sound speech that cannot be condemned. That he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Titus 2, 7 and 8. Today's young people are crying. Our children are crying. And I weep for our youth. I weep for the new millennium. As Jesus wept over Jerusalem when he said, Oh, Jerusalem. They are searching for authority. But we're giving it to them. They are searching for leadership. But we are following them. They are searching for examples. And we old folks are trying to be examples of the children. And last but not least, they are searching for love. What better place to get love and all these other attributes than at home? If they don't get it in the home, they will seek the village. So in my conclusion, I say, I hope that I helped somebody. It's not necessary for you to agree with me, but I want you to know that it does not take a village to raise a child. And I'll go a step further. Don't let the village raise your child. Raise your own child. And then you can raise them right. We want to thank you for tuning in. Amen. We want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, by way of announcement, Hope Covenant Kingdom Fellowship Spring Revival 2017. Uh, the date has changed to Thursday, June 22nd, 2017. And Friday, June 23rd, 2017, 7 o'clock p.m. The evangelist uh, of the week would be Reverend Bert Kennison. And the location of this service would be Evening Star Missionary Baptist Church, 4235 South Cottage Grove Avenue. Harriet Thompson Wells is administrative assistant. This is your humble servant, Pastor Michael Body. I am a presiding elder. And Pastor Anthony Dumas is uh, the host pastor. For more information, you can dial area code. 773-924-2790. We thank you all uh, for tuning in with us on today. And we're going to close by petitioning the throne of grace. Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, where should I go? Father God, the maker, the creator, the ruler of all things. We thank you for showing up again and for showing out. We thank you for being God. We thank you for blessing us to know kingdom principles. That we understand that you are the way, the truth, and the light. Oh God, that you will hold us in the hollow of your hand. We thank you for every blessing you have bestowed upon our lives. Now, Father, touch somebody. Touch every listener. Touch everybody that came this way. Oh, God, that we would be good stewards over the children that you gave us. That you would bless them with long life, with longevity, Father. Look on every family represented. We need you right now. We are weak. But you are strong. Hold us with thy powerful and mighty hand. Now we realize you can do anything with us that you want to do. You can be reckless with us and there's nothing we can do about it. So Father, we just say thank you for everything you've done for us. We thank you for another day. Now Father, keep us Protect us, shield us. We pray for your healing, for your deliverance. 
set the captive free, bind up broken hearts. Let us down in the treasure of your love, Father. And Father, we pray right now that somebody be helped from your word. We rebuke Satan right now and we cancel every assignment that he set up because we know Father you say that if we resist Satan he will flee so Father we pray that you allow us to put on the whole armor that we might be able to stand in this last and evil day Father now Father take us and hide us behind the cross you take the blessings and the glory you take the glory you take the victory and just give us the blessings. We pray all of this and we ask it in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost and in Jesus name we give thanks and everybody did say Amen. <laughs>